Welcome back to Art on a Budget. Today we're going to be painting a seascape. So what I have in front of you here is a palette and I have took the liberty to pre-mix some colors that we're going to be using. So it is a bit messy so I apologize for that but I have come to the conclusion that that's how my paintings usually end up. You know they it's a kind of a messy process but to let you know uh, I'm using a palette knife here uh, the palette knife helps uh, if you use that to mix your colors because uh, it will help protect your brushes you know um, it'll help keep your brush brushes uh, lasting longer and keep the integrity of the um, bristles a little longer okay and uh, the colors that I had that I started off with were titanium white I'm using a heavy body acrylic as well as a regular uh, weight acrylic with the titanium white and uh, light blue deep yellow thalo green yellow ochre Thallo Blue and Burnt Sienna and uh, I've mixed them with the colors that we're going to be using for our seascape today. Uh, you can break this down to a much simpler palette if you like by just having um, a little blue, green, white, and yellow. We're going to be using a small canvas today. Uh, just so that we don't have a two-hour video. I really don't like to uh, watch a two-hour video and so if I can get the information in there quicker uh, that works best for me and uh, hopefully for you too. And the brushes we're going to be using uh, Flathead Filbert uh, line brush and perhaps this fan brush uh, when we do our waves. Okay, so we're going to start off with the flathead. During the seascape, you want to think of three areas on your canvas. You're going to have the sky area, the sea area, and the beach area. So we're working in thirds. It doesn't have to be exact measurements of thirds, but you know that's what we're shooting for uh, to start off with. And we're going to start off with the sky, uh, and the horizon line is going to be your lightest area uh, to work on. So your lightest colors are going to be in here. Oh, one thing I wanted to pass on too is uh, I had told you on a previous video that you want to make sure that you uh, use conditioner, hair conditioner on your brushes before you store them uh, so that, you know, it helps keep your bristles in shape. Well, uh, yes, of course, that's true, but uh, before you use them again, you want to rinse that conditioner out. Okay, we're making vertical strokes here. Okay, and as we go up on the sky, I'm sorry, these are horizontal strokes. As we go up on the sky, it's going to get a little darker. So we can put a little darker colors in there. And anytime your colors um, kind of uh, get kind of sticky, uh, you can always add a couple of drops of that glycerin uh, water solution that I had mentioned in another video. Uh, it'll help make your palette more workable. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so like I said, we want the horizon line to be our lightest color. And we're gonna uh, try to put a little clouds in here too. there okay okay so uh, I'm gonna go back and try to add a little darker color up here All right. I used to get really nervous about painting uh, and I, I was just so afraid of making the mistake and would I hold the brush right, etc. But it was really a transformational moment for me whenever I realized that uh, I was just pushing the paint around on the canvas. And I thought, you know what, I can do that. I can push the paint around on the canvas. Okay, let's see if I can put a few little fluffy clouds in here. I don't think we're going to do anything elaborate with the clouds uh, today, uh, but I would like to, to do that with you in a future video. So we're just making a canvas with uh, some friendly clouds on a beautiful day at the beach. Okay, so um, we might have the look of uh, some, some clouds here. Might uh, see if I can fix that a little more. And where the ocean meets the horizon here, the sky, that is going to be the darkest part of the water right here. Okay, so I need to pull some dark colors from my palette here and I'm gonna uh, put a little green in there so that we have a uh, uh, typical looking uh, type of ocean water and I also put a little bit of that burnt sienna in there but uh, normally I would let this sky dry uh, and then put the tape on that I'm going to put on here but to save time, we are just going to put this tape on while it's still a little damp. But when you do this at home, uh, make sure that you let it dry. Okay? This is going to give us an even, hopefully, will give us an even horizon line. So I've got my dark color here going over this area with my dark color. And my paint's getting a little sticky. It's been a few minutes since I mixed it up, so uh, I'm going to take my eyedropper here that has the water glycerin solution and put a couple of drops on my palette 
and mix my paint with that and uh, now it's flowing a little smoother. Okay. If you get any lumps on your work, um, you know, try to pull that off and uh, clean your brush. Now I'm going to take the paint off and hopefully we have a good line. Yeah, it looks like we do. So, thank goodness for that. We have a pretty good line. Uh, all right. It may not be perfectly level though, so let me try to just fix it manually here. And then we can come back and um, put more white in that horizon line uh, to even that up, you know, when it gets a little drier. Okay? All right. So we've got that dark color for the farthest part of uh, the ocean. So I'm going to clean this brush. And uh, we will put some lighter colors down. You know, when we clean the brush, we've got the two washes, and you put it in the first wash, the second wash, and then clean it. So hopefully, you know, you don't get your colors too muddied up that way. And when you're working uh, wet here, uh, where your colors are still wet, it really does help blend everything nicely. I really do in, enjoy the sea, seascapes. I just love them. I love a day at the beach. However, I'm very fair skin, so you know, I could burn pretty bad out there. So if I have an umbrella uh, or tent kind of thing to sit under, that works out best for me at the beach. And so we want to always make sure that we've got our strokes going horizontally. And as this water comes toward the beach area, it's going to be lighter in color and even, I guess you could say, somewhat transparent because um, you're going to be able to see some of the beach or shoreline uh, coming through the water at the beach. Okay, so uh, let's move on then and try to lay some of this sand down. I'm going to go ahead and switch my filbert, although it wouldn't make really any difference if I use the flathead or the filbert for this. So we want uh, kind of a mixture of colors of the yellow and the yellow, yellow okra here. Because uh, as you've noticed, you know, it usually you don't have a uniform color in the sand. You'll have the lighter colors and the darker colors. And it just looks a little more interesting if your shoreline's not quite even. So we'll, we'll bring it up on this side. And we don't want to blend it real well because we want that uneven coloring, you know, because we want it to look like real sand. Now, um, we're going to 
come back to this and do some cool looking waves. Okay, we're back. I um, straightened up this horizon line here and uh, I just uh, tried to push a little more paint around on the canvas and uh, as we were talking about earlier you can just kind of uh, make what looks like waves on here um, just very simply like this. Now we're going to put a little water, uh, watered down paint in here to move it around a little easier. And we can come back with some uh, darker paint in here too. So uh, we want to keep in mind that the waves are smaller and darker uh, it, as we get further away from the shoreline. As we get closer to the shoreline, the water and the waves are, are lighter color. Okay. So I'm going to come back and pull a little bit more of the lighter blue and white with some little bit of water in there as we move closer to the shore. And you may have noticed that uh, when you've been to the beach before that the water uh, has kind of an awkward aqua color as you get closer to the shore. So uh, we're going to add a little bit of green to our blue-white mixture uh, to get that color. amazing just you know by going back and forth you can really create some realistic uh, looking waves okay now um, we're going to have a shoreline where the wave hits the shore it's going to um, be an uneven line because it usually doesn't come in evenly. And there'll be a cap uh, on the wave. Uh, I'm just going to go across the line here with the white frothy shoreline. I don't know if you've noticed uh, before, but it looks a little bit like a spider web as it comes toward shore, as the water comes toward shore. That there'll be a, these little lines in here like this. And so we're just going to put some of those down. and we'll come back over that so we don't want any firm set lines on this area so i'm going to come back with my brush and just kind of lightly go over that area
Okay, I'm going to get that line brush again and uh, make this more pronounced with the shoreline here. And so we'll have some areas that are thicker and other areas that are not as thick. Okay, there's a slight shadow on that wave as it hits uh, the beach. So we're going to take a little sienna, burnt sienna, and yellow ochre, and mix that together, and come up under this wave here. Paint is drying quickly tonight. Again, we don't want a uniform length on this uh, and width, you know, we want it to be a little uneven. I'm going to bring in a little more burnt sienna to make it a little more pronounced in some area. Okay, I think that's good for now. And I am going to um, <clears throat> bring up a little bit more sand uh, to the area. All right. All right. So you know, we just naturally created some some waves just by taking our brush back and forth on the canvas with the blue uh, and the white mixture together. And uh, so we're just going to continue to refine that a little. Thank you. 
Now we could uh, take the fan brush now and uh, take some of the blue and the white together and uh, just put some sea foam along the shoreline here. And the thing is, is that if you've added too much there, you can always come back and make changes. splash some water on my canvas but you know the good thing is is that it's an acrylic you know so it has water in it so it's not the end of the world Come back here and kind of uh, I, I added a little bit more water here than I intended to. Okay, I think that we are just about done here. Uh, we might do some further touch-ups, you know, to get it to uh, an area that we are, you know, have nothing further to add to it. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm pleased with this, and I hope you're pleased with your work and what you're working on there. So I think it's just about time to put our signature on. Um, but uh, what I love about um, this kind of work is just uh, being able to create that sense of depth in a painting, you know, where it, it looks like uh, you really are going um, back so that you see uh, the transition uh, in the colors and uh, it looks like you know like uh, there's a sense of depth, depth in your painting makes it more interesting and the lighter and dark colors um, do that for you Okay, uh, 
I hope you enjoyed this and don't forget to like and subscribe and um, I'll see you next time.